Hey everyone, in this video we'll be covering branching in conditionals and Boolean expressions. Our first example is what we call a code tracing problem, which basically just means that you should see what the program outputs without having to run the program. So a good way to deal with these is to maybe write it out or write in the code with comments of just what each expression is going to evaluate to. So let's do that. We have an if statement, if is student equals true, and we know is student is true. So this is saying if true equals true, then we'll print. And of course, true does equal true. So we can print out Tim is a good student because we know the name variable is assigned to string Tim. Okay, the next one is a little more tricky. And this is what we call Boolean literals or Boolean Zen. This means that we don't have to compare Boolean values to a true or false Boolean value because a Boolean value is true or false to begin with. So if we just say, if true, this code does run and it evaluates to true because as compared to the first one, which is also true, we're, we're saying true is true, so it runs, but we can also just say if true to begin with. So we can use the literal Boolean is student to print this out. So this will print out Tim is a good student. Finally, we have if age doesn't equal 19, we'll print out the age. Well, we know that age is 20, 20 doesn't equal 19, so let's print it out. And I'll run this code just to verify our work was correct. Nice. Okay, so the next example says to write a program that lets a user withdraw an inputted amount from their account and we'll properly handle any invalid situations, which we'll also call edge cases. So we have a balance float variable here, and we are going to withdraw money from this. So first, let's get that user input. Let's maybe make a variable called withdraw amount equals a float, because we're dealing with money, which typically is decimal values. And we'll say input, how much do you want to withdraw? And that looks good. So we might want to think about the invalid situations before we write the actual code. And one invalid situation that I can think of is, what if the user tries to withdraw $0 or less? Well, that shouldn't be able to happen, right? So we can just do a, a quick check if withdraw amount is less than or equal to zero, maybe we just tell the user, please enter a value over zero. And then we can get on with the rest of our code. In this case, we'll have it in an else block because note if I had instead put the rest of our code in an if statement block, we could have had this invalid situation, but later in the code, it still would have ran. This way, we only have sort of one path on the control flow tree that the code can take. And this will make more sense in a minute. So we have this else block here, and now we need to check for any more invalid situations. So what if the user has no money left in their account? Well, we can say if withdraw amount is greater than balance, we know that Let's say you do not have the sufficient funds to do that. And then again, with the whole idea of control flow, we don't just want to write our code to withdraw here, as in, in the same indentation level as the if statement, because even if this if statement is triggered, the rest of the code will run. So again, we want an else statement here. And then finally, we can do that just basic withdrawing code. So balance equals balance minus withdraw amount. And then maybe we tell the user your new balance after the withdrawal is, and then I'll use F strings for this. And then let's see if this works. So let's first test this invalid case. I'll try to withdraw zero. It says, please enter a value over zero. And in fact, maybe we put in a negative number there. 
it does the same thing, so that's good. And then maybe I try to withdraw $1,000. It does the second if statement, it catches that invalid situation. And then finally, maybe we just say we wanna withdraw 1256. And it gives us our new balance. Of course, we might also want to round this. So using F string rounding, I can round to two decimal points here. So let's try that again. And we get that dollar value. Finally, we're asked to write a program that takes a user inputted number and does the following. If the number is divisible by three, print fizz instead of the number. If it's divisible by five, print buzz instead of the number. And if it's divisible by both, print fizz buzz instead of the number. Otherwise, print out the number. And this may seem like a weird problem, but this is actually a somewhat common interview question, or at least it has been in the past, to just make sure that people understand control flow and just basic programming things. But it also makes a really good problem here. So let's start it off by making that variable for a user inputted number. Int input, please enter a number. We'll say that to the user and then Let's start. I mean, these statements here are almost written in the way that we want them in our code, right? If the number is divisible by three and we wanna check that it's equal to zero, so num mod three equals zero, we will print fizz instead of the number and then the same with five and note I used an else if statement there. We'll print out buzz. I used an else if statement there for the same reasons as listed above. We don't want the rest of the code to run in each one of these cases. We just want to print out one thing. Next, let's do this last case. If both are true, so if num mod three equals zero and num mod five equals zero, we'll print fizzbuzz. Otherwise, we'll print the number. Now, there's actually an issue with this program, but let's run it and see what happens first. So if I enter three, we should get fizz, that's correct. If I enter five, we should get buzz, that's correct. Now, you may see this coming. If I enter 15, which is divisible by three and five, I only get fizz. And again, this just has to deal with control flow. So hopefully you're catching on by now that this statement this whole else if statement here needs to be moved as the first statement. And another way to think about this is you want the most general expression or statement that captures all of the cases. If there are similar cases like the divisible by three, divisible by five, or divisible by both, you want this most general statement to come first. So let's switch that around and we'll update our if and else if structure. And then we'll try 15 again, that's fizzbuzz. And then let's enter one, which should be neither. That's right. Okay, so that's it for branching conditionals and Boolean expressions. Let us know if you have any questions.